Then Yancey Derringer was a TV show. This is that little card right here. I'm going to try to put it on the screen. That I picked up at Brimfield last year. I picked up some of these little Western cards. And I sold that. And I said in a video. And I've had people come in and contact. And this was the most descriptive one from Larry Way Out. With this video, I'm going to go through the regular things. The what's sold. I sold 33 postcards today. I'm going to go through them. I'm not going to make you look at every one of them. There's a good stack from one customer that of the ships I'll just tell you about. Then the special topic is bakery postcards. A lot of them I see with bakery delivery wagons. But anything with bakery in the title is what I picked out. I wanted to learn a little bit more about those old shops that we see in real photo postcards or the postcards what the bakeries do. So I dug into that and we'll dig into it together when I get to that point after the what's sold. Then I have a poll. One of the viewers. How many postcards do you put in an EquiSwift envelope with eBay standard envelope? So that just went out. He asked me to put it out there and I did. And we'll go over that real quick with some comments. Then I got some viewer comments I pulled out of uh, YouTube on there. I wish I could put everybody's comments in. I just can't. It would load up the whole video. But if you want to see what the comments are on a video, go down and look and join the conversations. But let's go ahead and get started with the what's sold. 33 postcards. First one I sold, Hawaii. This is uh, lava. Lava sells. Lava's good. Next one is two naval covers. Now these are naval ship covers. It's got a stamp and it was made, uh, postmarked from the ship. And this is the WASP, USS WASP. This is 1960s. Both of these are 1960s. So that's what they're looking for is that. Is there. So I got two of these went out. Next one is Hotel Shantley, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Just a hotel car. They buy the back. Posted. And it was posted in 1914. Didn't see much on it. Sold four to five dollars. Post office. Louisiana, Monroe, Louisiana, linen card, unposted, four to five dollars. Next one, I have three more Hawaii cards that sold. I got the Hawaiian Beauty, another Hawaiian Beauty, and a bunch of Tahitian dancers. That's three cards. Now the next one I sold is the Oak Ridge, ARDM-1. It's an older ship. It's a print. It's one of those matted ones. On there. That sold four to five dollars. Next one, I sold Jamaica cards for. I sold five of them for thirty, thirty-six dollars. This is Jamaica. This is a Bay Hotel, Runaway Bay. Keep them organized. So I don't mess it up. This is the Manor Hotel in Kingston, Jamaica. This is a swimming pool in Ocho Rios. This is the Manor House Hotel, Constant Spring, Jamaica. This is a heavier cardstock on there. That's sold. And then this is the Jamaica Hilton, Mammy Bay. And it's posted right there. Can't tell when it was posted. But that these five cards sold for $36. Next one is... The Mirage South Pavilion, Great Lakes, Great Salt Lake, divided back card, four to five dollars. This is one I've sold. This sold for six eighty-eight. So probably an offer sent out on it. But this is Schaefer Lake in Indiana, Indiana Beach. I went there when I was younger, multiple times. It's not about two three hours south of me. Maybe yeah, about that far. But I got these cards. I knew I was going to price them up. I don't see a lot of these. But this is the second one I've sold for that price. So I got $6.88. I think it's probably up for $7.65 on there. This one sold for $5.65. This is the Hawaii. A Hawaii card. So that sold for $5.65. Now this is the big boat lot. The guy bought 14 cards for $65. And this is all of them here. All the, all the prints. Little uh, There's some a lot of Continentals. There's some standard in there, but he bought those. One thing neat about him is he is an authority. To have an authority on something, you have to have experience and have skill. Experience equals skill, and then you get an authority. So you're an authority figure on it. 
He was a naval person that was on many of these boats. He has found two postcards I got from that club that are missed marked. One of them was like a DLG-2, should be 20. I've taken that one down. And another one, uh, he's not for sure where it was, if it was correct or not, but it's not the right boat. And Because he was on that boat for deployment. And so I've taken both of those down and I correspond with them. So if you, if you ever have anybody question a postcard from you and they have, an, they have authority, take it to heart. Be humble about it and work with them. I've had people tell me I had the wrong name for a mountain. Even though the card said that, what it was, it was the wrong mountain. I just put in the description. Card says this, but it might be this. But be humble when people try to correct your cards. If you're never sure about a postcard, put it up. Someone will tell you. But I, I never get upset when people tell me that. So I got two boat cards I need to research and see what I can do with them. Then this one I sold a uh, banner card. Just some flowers. Four to five dollars. I call these banner cards. Then, so I had 33 postcards for eBay. Equal $160.51. Average sale price of $4.86. Not a lot of high sale price. It's because of the ships and stuff. Those sell for $4.65. And they get, since he bought so many, he gets a 15% discount. So that's why that went down. But then someone bought a jeweler's loop where you look at the RPPCs with a little light, folds out from the Ko fi store and the stamp box thing, and the uh, sell through rate. And I'm shipping the stamp box card and the little loop thing uh, to them and that came to $19.25 I didn't add the shipping in that's totally separate on Ko-Fi so my total for the day is $180 $179.76 not a bad day I'll take more days like that but that gives me a lot of $70 that's what I want to do every day this, and this is how some days you get a little bit more the big $60 order really helped and that's not the first one he's done. He bought $200 in there. And he does get a um, discount on that. But that's what's sold. Not all about the money. It's about what types of cards sell. They all sell. Pretty much. Special topic. Every video I do, try to find a postcard or a topic of a postcard that I want to learn. And I think you want to learn as well. These are on bakeries. Anything with bakery in the title for a postcard. Fruit cakes, stores. Now we're going to see some pricing, the sell to rate, and what to look for. But while I do that, I'm going to give you some history so we build a foundation of bakery. What to really key in on, just enough to get you enticed to go do more research. I found a lot of stuff, but I broke it down to these paragraphs. And while I do that, I'm going to show you some of the postcards out there that I found with bakery topic part of it on there. Delivery wagons, shops, stuff like that. The history of bakeries in the United States dates back to the early colonial period, long, long time ago. European settlers brought their baking traditions and techniques to the New World, and baking quickly became an essential part of American culinary culture. In the 18th and 19th centuries, small-scale local bakeries were prevalent, providing freshly baked bread, pastries, and other treats to communities across the country. Now I'm getting hungry. The early bakeries played a vital role in supplying sustenance to the growing towns and cities, catering to the daily needs of the population. As industrialization took hold in the late 19th century, larger scale bakeries emerged equipped with mechanized equipment that increased production capacity. This led to the mass production and distribution of bread, making it more accessible to a broader segment of the population. The bakery industry continued to evolve over the years, adapting to changing co consumer preferences and technological advances. Today, American bakeries encompass a wide range of styles and specialties, from traditional artisanal bakeries to modern pastries and cupcake shops offering an array of delicious baked goods to satisfy the nation's sweet tooth. In recent decades, the bakery industry in the United States has experienced a significant transformation driven by changing consumer tastes and the rise of specialty bakeries. With increasing demand for diverse and innovative baked goods, a new wave of bakeries emerged, emphasizing high quality ingredients and unique flavors. 
These bakeries often draw inspiration for global cuisines, incorporating international flavors and techniques in their creations. Additionally, the rise of health-conscious consumers has led to the popularity of organic, gluten-free, and vegan bakeries, catering to a specific dietary needs and preferences. The bakery industry also embraced technology with online ordering, delivery services, social media marketing becoming integral parts of many bakeries' business. Furthermore, the popularity of television shows and competitions centered around baking has fueled interest and enthusiasm for the craft, resulting in proliferation of home bakers, special specialty baking supply stores across the country. As a result, the United States boasts a vibrant and diverse bakery scene, reflecting the nation's rich culinary heritage and its ever-evolving taste and preferences. In the United States, there is a bakery that exclusively specializes in creating miniature versions of fam famous architectural landmarks out of bread, from the Statue of Liberty to the Golden Gate Bridge. This bakery, edible creations, are meticulously detailed and delight both locals and tourists alike. In a quirky bakery located in Oregon, they specialize in creating bread sculptures that resemble famous celebrities, from Brad Pitt to Beyonce. These edible masterpieces capture the likeness and details of well-known personalities. Customers can even custom request custom bread sculptures of their favorite stars. And the last fact. In a small town in Texas, there is a mobile bakery wagon that is pulled by a team of trained goats. <laughs> instead of a traditional vehicle. The wagon, amply named the Goat Bakery, travels around town offering freshly baked bread and pastries while adding a unique quirky touch to the bakery experience. I wonder how those goats do. But that there's some facts about bakeries. So it is a topic that does have rich history and some meat to it. And it's something we want to look at. But do they sell? Here's a, that little gauge I've been talking in the videos. Zero to three, low, red, stay away from them. Don't deal with them. Average is four to seven percent. High, eight to ten percent. The average will sit, but they will tend to sell. But the eight to ten sell a little faster. Then the 11 plus are the outliers that you always want to grab because they, they pr pretty much sell. Not guaranteeing that this is going to get you a sale, but your chance of selling something at the very high and high is better than average and way more than a low. How did bakery stack up? Bakery, so I calculate sell through rate by taking the sold out of eBay, divided by listed, and times by 100 to get a solid percent. I round up or down on the percent. Postcard bakery, there was 165 postcards sold with 2,200. So this is a smaller niche. People are not putting bakery in the titles or not a lot of the cards. Something to look at. Times 100 gives you an 8%. And on the chart, that's right at the start of the high. So it's average high, right on the edge. Of the, I think if there was more cards, it would probably dump over to high. But people are looking at them more than the 4%. So I would say it's average, tending into the high. Postcard drugstore came in at 9%. A little higher. I thought drugstore would do a little bit better. And the bakery was at 8 Postcard cake was 7%. And Postcard Cafe was 3%. Don't use Cafe. So it's up there. It's something you want to look for. If I saw them in a box, I'd pull them out. Because I know they're tending to be a little higher than the average card from a sell rate standpoint. So not too bad. Do some of them sell for a higher price? I got some of the extreme pricing, the high, high ones I pulled out. I pulled out three. First one, New Jersey Ho Ho Coos Main Street Bakery. 5 to 10 store. 1968 Postcard. Best offer on $100, probably took $90, $80. Looks like a Chrome card, but it's a bakery. Not bad for that card. Then the postcard with a bakery wagon. These are the ones I tend to pick up or spot if I can afford them. Real photo of Cobb's Bakery, delivery wagon, driver, Scranton, Pennsylvania. $94.95. That is a really neat looking postcard. 
got a wagon, bakery, got advertising. It's got everything. Not bad. Good job on that one. Then you got Michigan Ann Harbor Home Bakery, horse-drawn wagon, real photo. Another wagon. That's why I was talking about those wagons. That's what I keyed on. And now I'm looking at the shop and that chrome card sold for almost $100. So there's something here with the bakeries. That's why I did the topic. But if you get one with a wagon and you can tell that it's a bakery, make sure you get that in a time, uh, better chance than, the, than not. But then you look at the average cards we see out there. How do they tend to do? Here's one. Postcard, Grant Avenue, and Chinatown. Got a good thing going for it is Chinatown, San Francisco. It's a linen. Got $15 for it. What is it for the bakery? California Bakery on the end. That's why I picked it up. All the way on the end of this title is why I picked it. And it's still found it. So is there something with that, putting all the stuff up front? In the first five or it won't be found? It found, look at that, bakery is all the way at the end of that title, that long title that's done in all caps, and it's still picked up on my query. That's why I put that one in. I'll leave it up to you. Next one is San Jose, California. It's a bakery, Santa Clara County. Looks kind of weird, but it has a background, the building, you know, multi-view. $11. That looks like a linen card also. And then you got Minneapolis, Minnesota, St. Paul, Bakery, and Lunch. $11. That's better than average. I'd, I'd, I'd sell those for that one. Right then you look at the lows. You got the $120, $320, I couldn't even sell cards that low and still make the money I need and break even. It's just, I, I don't know. I'll leave it, leave it up to you guys. But I, I don't put those in my equations. They're not even, you just got to know that's there. I don't even consider my competition. It's just so far down. They need to bring it up if they want to pay for their time. But what do I think of bakeries? To sum it up, I'm definitely still going to look for the wagons. I'm looking for the storefronts. I'm looking for the stuff inside, the bread makers, all that type of stuff. Because I know I can price them up a little bit more than the average card. Especially if you want to get into real photos with those wagons. And you can identify those really good on there. So I think bakeries is, uh, there's probably more cards out there than I found, but they didn't have bakery in the title. So you want to get bakery, wagon, and the title. I think that's a key thing for some collectors. People, collections I've seen had advertising wagons from the old, and the real photo postcards and stuff. Something I'm going to pick up. I learned a little bit about bakeries, and I learned that there's a trend with those. I'm seeing an upward tick in pricing, and an upper tick in the number of cards listed since I did the research. I'm not going to break the banks. I'm going to turn overnight, but it's better than it was. Bakeries. Who knew? Now, for the poll this week, Design Your Cards asked me if I could put a poll up there. I've always asked everybody, if you got a poll or a question, want me to put out there, and it'll work into my community here. I can't put up a poll that just... Well, off the left field or something that's going to get negative comments. I don't want to start those conversations. But if it's something about postcards and you want to have a question and it's straightforward that I can put out there, design your cards, ask me. I went ahead and scheduled it and it came out. I pulled it a little early, 47 votes. It'll probably get up to about 80. But he wanted to know how many cards do you ship together in an Echo Swift 6.5 by 4.5 envelope? One of these. These are the envelopes that I use. Best envelope is what I call them. He even gave me the range. He, I put 1 to 4, 5 to 10, 11 to 15. 72% said 1 to 4. 5 to 10 was 21%. Nobody did 11 to 15. And then I got six different comments in there. I usually stick 3 to 4. I don't go over that on there. I just don't want to play the games with the post office and I'm with some of these other ones that are just a little bit too rigid and on there but five to ten is in there people are shoving those in there and 11 to 15 zero I just I think it's too thick I don't, it'll meet the requirements but they said it has to go around about the size of a pop can is what the rollers are is what I've heard I haven't verified that but someone says it's about the size of a pop can that they turn on and if it can turn on that, that'll be fine. I think the machines do more than we think. They can, they can do more. And some of these, I think, are pushing the limit a little bit, but they're making it through. 
Now, only question I have, I haven't researched it. I was waiting to see if the comments, but if I remember right, with eBay standard envelope, it's three cards or below for the insurance. Has anybody ever put a claim in for a claim above three cards? Has anybody done that? And got, you know, if you had six cards in there and they got lost and you put a claim in, did you get reimbursed for that? Let me know in the comments. I'll have to go back and look at my notes and look at the help file on there. But I think it's three cards is what they insure up to. So if you had six cards, you, I don't know if they'll give you anything or they'll just give you up to three. So if anybody knows that, let me know. But three comments. Design your cards, the one that requested this poll was, thanks Mark for posting my poll suggestions. I have shipped up to nine sleeve postcards in an Echo Swift envelope. Pushing the limits there. I'm not saying it's wrong. I I, I don't do it. I, I I stay at the, I can put about three cards in, four cards for one ounce, and I'll even do separate envelopes. So if you have six cards, you can always print out another label and do two envelopes. They're going to most of the time show up together. I've done that instead of going to, you know, that new ground advantage and stuff like that. So if I have eight cards, I'll put four in this one and four in this one and send it for, you pay a little bit more, but they'll show up and I'm, I'm not paying the, advantage but I, I don't want to get into where they said it was a letter and I price it as a package if I put a package envelope on there that's a letter and so I use the boxes a lot when I go up in the 8 to 12 15 there they, they, they paid enough in shipping to cover that people have done it I'm not saying it's right or wrong it's whatever you want to run your business and I don't want to run mine with that I'm not saying it's wrong I just do it a little different Makes it the same. They get there. Jay Smith said, I started a new envelope after four sleeve postcards as it feels a little too rigid. That's about where I'm with Jay. In the past, I've had six by eight Echo Swift mailers get destroyed by the post machines when I had six oversized sleeve postcards in there. Hmm. Yeah, I haven't had one destroyed in a long time. Once in a while, you get something back, but. I've seen some pretty nasty ones out there, but it doesn't happen often. I don't bake my business on that one hundred year flood. And then the last one, trying to learn this says seven was the most, no issues. So they are pushing the limits and they are getting them through. So I'm, I don't say it's a problem or whatever, but I hope this got what you want to design. But if anybody has any poll questions you want me to put it out there, you want to answer, let me know. I'll put it out there and everybody can vote on it and give you their comments and stuff. And, just send it to me an email or uh, at contact at smpostcards.com and say, hey, I want to do a poll. And this is the question. I might rephrase it a little bit. Let it rip. We'll see what the mass say. Not just me. That's the poll. Viewer comments. Pulled these out of YouTube this time. So I got the name of the people in there. If you put comments in the YouTube, I consider them public. If you send me an email to contact at smpostcards.com, I consider those more one-on-one. -on -one. Unless I ask you if I can put it on a video. Or I can put it on a video and not use your name. And stuff like that. But if you put it in YouTube, everybody sees it anyway. So I, I'll put it out there. But Neil, Calamity Photo, came back and said, That thing you wondered about at the end is definitely not true. And this was at the end of the video where I asked about time away. So if you put time away on for vacation, and during vacation you list some items or have some scheduled, People are saying that's not part of time away and you'll get ding for not shipping on time if you don't change your handling too. I, I'm not going on vacation and stuff, so I, I can't test it right now. But if I was, and Neil came back and said this, that thing you wondered about at the end is definitely not true. I had listings scheduled at least every hour for two to three years. I'd been using it regularly before it was free. I use time away all the time and have never had any issues. And Neil has authority. He sells the top dollar stuff. He knows the archiving process, the paper, all ephemera. And, you know, so there's a, Neil has the experience, the skill, and the authority. So when I see that, I haven't seen the issue. But someone told me they had the issue and stuff like that. So thanks, Neil. Then Dan L4565 says, thanks, Mark. 
I enjoyed this video. I enjoyed this video every Monday, and it was a nice start of the week. Great. I don't know. Thanks for watching. I, I try to get them out every week. I got them scheduled out. I don't think I'm going to miss the rest of the year. On there, I batch them up sometimes. I get a little far ahead, and I, I got to slow down a little bit. Otherwise, I'm way too far on there. Every time I hear you talk about the cards that don't sell, I think of Mount Vernon. Yeah, that's the... I, I have sold some, but I probably have more in my boxes than I should. Made a mistake and bought a huge lot to start, and since my investment... And since I got my investment back, but must have been 100 plus for Mount Vernon cards in there, which I'm pretty sure would not sell even if I listed them as a quarter on eBay. Yeah, Mount Vernon, there's just so many of those out there. Anything with George Washington, a lot of this stuff is just all over. Now, George Washington and Masonic Alexandria, I always sell those. Anything Masonic, not for a high, high dollar, but it's like Salt Lake, they'll, they'll move if you price them right. But yeah, Mount Vernon is on my list, not the list. I'll throw them in the bucket. Unless it's a very ornate, older card, something different, not the tourist, the west side of the mansion, the north side of the mansion, the Washington's tomb, stuff like that I don't list anymore. I have enough of those. But thanks, Dan. Then Yancey Derringer was a TV show. This is that little card right here. I'm going to try to put it on the screen. That I picked up at Brimfield last year. I picked up some of these little Western cards, and I sold that, and I said in a video, and I've had people come in and contact, and this was the most descriptive one from Larry Way Out about this guy. And this is why I do it. This is why I show some of the stuff on the video, so I get comments like this. I learn. I like stuff like this. But Yancey Derringer was a TV show. Jock, sometimes Jack, Mahoney, he was also the Range Rider. There was a, te a team episode with a minute was Tarzan in two films and was a stuntman in many action films doing stunts for Errol Flynn. Boy, that goes way back. John Wayne and Gregory Peck and was in five Three Stooges shorts. Also the basis for the Brian Keith Jocko character in the movie Hooper. My brain has too much useless info. No, it doesn't, Larry. This is info that you need to share. Keep commenting like this. I like that. But this is who he's talking about on there. And I just picked those up. I picked up a bunch of them for a dollar or so. And I sold them all. Little trading cards like that sell. You just gotta price them to sell. I think I sold it for four sixty-five, my lowest I'll go, and probably threw an offer on it and it sold. I'm not gonna get top dollar for it, but it brings people into the store, into you, looking at your stuff. And if you pack and ship it right, one or two days, got a good price on it, it's gonna go. It'll sell. It might take a little bit of a while, but there. But who would have thought Yancey would have Derringer would have sold? Check out those bakery cards. I'm getting hungry now. I love bakeries. I love fresh made bread. But the the wagons is what I always keep on it. But I'm going to start looking a little bit closer at some of the other ones as I go through boxes. That's all I got for today. Here's some fish.